Okay, so this is my first Italian um, learning video. As you can see, I've already accomplished my goals today. I did a video, uh, the 13th video for Spanish today. I did a fifth video for German today, and this will be my first video for Italian. I want to do this because, um, well, each of them are for study abroad prep. And I've been studying Spanish for so long since I was a kid, I really want to be fluent in it. But not only that, excuse me, uh, not only that, it's going to help me when I go back to Italy. I know that it has some similarities with uh, Italian, you know, before. I just didn't realize to what extent because I never really studied Italian like that. Um, and then when I went to Italy, I forgot the little Italian that I did learn completely um which was usual for me at the time i'd get too nervous and boom, my mind was a white blank so the only thing i had to fall on was spanish and then even when i tried speaking a little italian like i remember um asking for the bathroom they just replied okay you know baño i was like what that's spanish okay but no italian is mutually intelligible with spanish and french romanian and I believe a tiny bit of uh, Portuguese. They're all kind of mutually, int mutually intelligible with each other. Um, there's actually a lot of French in here too, like mange and such, like eat. But, um, and then there's things that's obviously specific to Italian only. But, I mean, if you've been studying the uh, um, Romance language family, you pretty much start to realize how similar they all are to each other. Uh, but especially the top ones. And by top, I mean the most common ones I've, I've actually heard, experienced, and then the ones that's either ranked top 10 most spoken in the world and or most needed um, at this point in time. So, um, yeah, S -S Italian, Portuguese, Spanish... French and Romania are all on my top list. Romanian because I started I started learning it when um I don't know I had a it just came to me randomly one day and like in the later half of 2014 I was like you know what I'm going to learn it. I mean I was really into like you know well I still am but um like Dracula, the history of Dracula and whatnot between whether it's based off of um, Bram Stoker's version or another book or writing or something that I've uh, I read about some years back and or um, whether it's based off of um, Vlad, Vlad Tepes and whatnot. But one thing I learned from years back is just like if you're going to learn some history about a country, you know, you need to kind of go to that country. And when I search online, you know, I change Google when I can or whatever. Really want to know something different, uh, which is always what I mean, like, in that target language. I want to be able to read it and not just um, have to translate it. But, yeah, so, and that's why I learned Romanian. Then uh, a couple of people I knew, one person that I worked with was from Moldova, so he helped me with my Romanian. And then another person was from actual Romania. Both of them speak Romanian, obviously. But the Moldova's like right next door to Romania. I think it's like on the east side somewhere. Sorry, I don't know what's going on. I have uh, like hiccups and burps and whatnot. Not sure what that's all about, but whatever. So anyways, back to Italian. Um, going back to Italy, I fell in love with Italian a while back. I don't even know when I first fell in love with Italian. It wasn't so much learning it, it was just hearing it. You know, like Greek. I think that's a very beautiful language. I really, really do. No matter who I hear speak it. You know, both Greek and Italian. Um, I just think they're very beautiful languages. To hear, to hear the passion, to hear the sounds. It's... It's gorgeous. Have you ever heard an, an Italian speak? I think it's just it's simply fantastic. So no, I don't know when I first fell in love with it really, but I did. Still am in love with it. I plan and then oh, so 
I'll be studying abroad this summer in Italy. They teach the class in Italian too. So I'm, I'm with the Northwest Arkansas Community College right now and um, I'm doing a program with them, a summer program with them, and we're going to Siena. I forgot what the name of the school is called, but whatever. I can't think about it right now. I mean, I'm trying to, but it's not coming to my mind. I'm not sure why. Uh, probably because I have a lot on my mind, but whatever. And I don't know why I'm saying whatever so much. But yeah, so I'll be taking, they offer the um, photography as well as world civilization to 1,500 courses there in Siena. And it's a major college town from what I was told. I never went there. I was on an island of Sicily. You know, I traveled from Signella on up to Terramina. My God, is it beautiful. The Pelotorani mountain range is gorgeous as well. Did I say that right? I've written posts about this, and I st I'm, I'm having issues. I need to get my life together. So I'm taking the World Civ instead of photography. Even though I want to take the photography class, I have to take World Civilization to 1500 because I'm doing a dual degree. I'm getting an electrical engineer degree, and then I'm also getting the global studies degree. Now, at... The community college is called Global Studies at University of Arkansas is called International Relations. So I have a, an advising appointment um, at the end of this month with my advisor. We're going to go over my degree plans. You know, she's going to get me started on that as well. But I'm also, and I'm also just about able to um, um, graduate with the, my first associate's degree. It's, it's like in fine arts or something. But on my way to getting the electrical, electrical engineering degree, I have every single class. Well, I'll have every single class this semester, minus macroeconomics. But I can clip out of that, which I'm actually about to do. Now that I said it, I need to go ahead and sign up for clip. I need to get my clip book out and go ahead and start doing that as well. So studying uh, for that, too. might do that on spring break. But, um... I kind of forgot where I was going with this. Oh, yeah, so my dual degree program. So with me, I can actually see myself in this line of field. Um, it didn't really hit me until two months ago, this past January, while I just was sitting down doing my homework. And all of a sudden, I was like, wow, this really is a passion of mine. Like, I can really see myself in this line of work. I mean, this and anything to do with languages, as well as um, music, of course. I've been composing music um, for a while. I took, actually, no, I still have my other page up, Asher Nix, but I'm not really doing anything with it, so I kind of took all my social media down. Well, I didn't kind of, I took it down, but I just it just came to me. I was just like, wow, this is really a passion of mine. I can really see myself doing this. This is something that's fun for me. And I love sharing my videos. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be able to do this now. I love sharing them because even though I'm not, you know, a huge social media influencer, whatever you want to call it, the fact that I actually enjoy doing this without making money, without being big, blah, 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 blah. I mean, it just shows that it's a true, true passion of mine. And it made me really happy. So I can see myself doing this line of work. I'm working on it now. Um, I mean, not only do I want to be a translator with these languages, but from a, not just a business perspective, just personally, I love getting an idea where people have come from. In my opinion, people are people. You know, everyone has their own experience in life. Um, they have their own beliefs, things that led up to their own beliefs, whether they were taught to believe things they were believed and or life taught them to believe the things they believe. They, you know, it's just experiences. I love talking to people. I love hearing stories. I love sharing stories. Um, I love helping people when it comes to learning languages, what software to use, you know, figuring out how best they learn because I believe everyone is capable of learning pretty much everything. It just, it has to be delivered to them in a certain type of way. Um, I learned that too, like a while back. Case in point, me. I learned in various ways. Some ways I have to be hands-on. Some I can learn just by the book. Others I can learn just by hearing, seeing, 
you name it, whatever the case may be. So that's how I see myself, and I feel like this, when I go back to Italy this time, I feel like it's going to be a better experience because the first time I went, it was on deployment. Let me tell you, when you're on deployment in the military, the first thing is not fun. The first mission is not go out sightsee. You know, when you're in another country, you have to respect the other country's wishes. You, you know what I mean? Like, you, you have to be respectful to the country that you are actually in. It's not your country. Um, so, you know, even though there's been cases where that's not been the case, but meaning, like, you know, you've seen it in the news and probably seen it in the news. <sighs> American soldiers and whatnot, not just being completely disrespectful. But, anyways. Since I'll be studying there, and I can see myself going back there for work and for pleasure. Learning this language is big on me. I mean, I love the history. I, the history of the world, it, seeing a different architecture. I mean, the United States is a very young country. We're, we're, pre, we're, we're very much babies. Our country is very much a baby country. Um, I, I liken us to the toddler stages right now. <laughs> Whole bunch of fighting and whatnot. So... Going here, it'll it'll just help me keep stuff in perspective, look at things a different way. Um, and also, I just found out what was it at our first meeting? They um they passed a law to where you can't change the outside of the buildings in Siena. The inside is uh, you know is different, but the outside, you know, they want to remember their history and such like that. I think it's just very great that they would do something like that just you know because you, you don't want to lose it in time that's something that can be around forever if we don't destroy it and or if nature doesn't destroy it because well nature is might <laughs> I'm just saying but Italian I mean I'm I'm really excited I'm ready for this semester to be over um I mean I need to graduate with straight A's or have this semester end with straight A's because I will be going through the ISA program for Berlin this fall and Greece next, um, next starting next spring. So while I'm ready, I need to focus on now too. But the now also includes the languages because I believe now what you do now affects your future and this is why I started the video today. I've been having the itch. I'm like I need to just start it no matter how much I do of it. I'm like I just have to I have to start it and I haven't started I haven't practiced Italian in a few days actually. Probably at least a week. Um but I've I mean I've I've been consistent. I've been consistent. So it's just been a, a, a step by step process between you know, passions, working on my passions and stuff I, you know, small business type of stuff and college, which takes up my entire freaking day, my weekend, and pretty much just my entire life. Um, <laughs> so it's just dedication, but I, again, I want to start, I'm like, I have to start somewhere. If I want to get better, the only way I can get better is by practicing. The only way I can get better practicing is by continuing to practice and start now. And then on top of that, like I just said in my uh, fifth German video, um, some minutes back, I'm like, I hate practicing on my phone now because ever since I changed the screen last month, it's been very, like, too touchy. And then I had to redo it. And so it's good, but, some, but every, every once in a while, it just starts freaking out. Um, just like, I don't, I don't know. It just doesn't, not recognizing touch and one thing I hate about Apple is that I can't calibrate the screen. So at least when I had an Android and it started jacking up, I just recalibrated the screen and called it a freaking day. Apple's not like that. So, in that aspect, Apple sucks ass. Excuse my language. But I still have Apple products and Windows. But yeah, so, do my phone has forced me to start doing my uh, studying back on my laptop, and I don't regret it at all. I don't. I don't. I actually love it. So, but it forced me to do it on my laptop, 
if it makes me just think it's like, well, why not do a video with it? So this past week I've been, you know, doing more and more videos on a daily basis with languages, and now again I came to Italian because it's been bugging me, and I'm like, I need to know it. Uh, more so now because, well, spring break is next week. Technically, it actually starts this week for me on Friday, um, but. And, all, and then it goes all next week. But, I mean, once spring break is over, school's going to go by so fast. It just is. That's just how it is. So, and I, I need to I need to have this nailed for when I go study abroad. So, I know I just rambled on. I'll put this in the description if you want to, like, you know, just bypass this. But, and I probably should have said that in the beginning. It's like in my last German video. Oh, well. But I'm going to go ahead and start. We're going to see how much um, I remember. Some stuff I remember, some stuff I don't. I studied this before on another account, but I lost that Duolingo account. I have no idea how to log back in. So, I mean, I've, so I'm, I've been building, let's see, back up. Uh, I stopped here because it wasn't on my list to travel. I stopped here again not on my list of travel and Russian. Russian's actually pretty easy. Now that I got over my intimidation of the Cyrillic alphabet. So and let me spit my gum out before I go. Um, I don't know, Russian just came up one day. I wrote the alphabet I think a couple years back and I just got over my intimidation of it. And looked at it as any other language that has symbols, and I was okay with it. It first I was okay with Japanese, I think then Russian, and then Mandarin Chinese char um, characters, which some of them I was able to differentiate upon. But I haven't studied it in over a year, so anyways, back to this. I'm gonna go on. I don't know how long I'm gonna go. I gotta do my study trigonometry because I have an exam tomorrow and. I need to get an A on it, so. Oh no, it's finished. I think it stopped taking the sound. Still messing up from the last video. I don't know why it does this. No sound. Hmm. Oh, I forgot. I can't remember. I don't remember. Monja, whatever. That's French. That's the Italian way. But at least you can see the similarities. So yeah, I don't know what's going on. My computer is being stupid. I think you have too many things running. Oh no, I only have quick time and... Yeah, I don't know. So I apologize. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. It just, it only does it with this program too. Like it'll just stop, randomly stop with the sound and then it'll start doing this. Um, yeah, it sucks. What the heck?
Let me see if refreshing will help any. L'elefante. Oh, yeah. By the way, I did not really read that. L'anatra. Il serpente mangia il tocco. La mosca è nello zucchero. Mosca. È nello. Lo squalo mangia. Il ragno mangia il pane. Ragno. Il serpente mangia il tocco. I should know that one. La tartaruga. In Spanish is tortuga. Tartaruga. See the similarities now. La scimmia è nello zoo. Scimmia. È un lupo. So in Italian they have E, eh, in Spanish it's S, so, you know, it is, same thing. I'm more so saying that for me, thinking out loud. But I hope it helps you. La tigre beve acqua. Beve. Pinguino mangia pesce. So even though, you know, Italian is not necessarily, well, it isn't mutually intelligible with English, you can still see some English similarities with it. Oh, as you can see, 
these are the days where I'm just doing a bare minimum, which is meeting my 50 um, XP for the day. I'm trying to keep it above 185. I really am. I, my goal is to get 500 a day. I know that I'll have to sit aside a minimum of two hours a day. Um, I'm working on that. First came being consistent. Oh crap, my espresso machine is on. I just thought of this because I had it on Steam. I have the Mr. Coffee um, espresso finger no, jigger, and I have the cap on it. I don't know how to work the frother yet, um, so I kind of just do it on the stove myself. But I thought it was burning. It was going to melt the cap. I was waiting for it to depressurize, but yeah. So it's all good. We're safe. And yes, I had espresso in the evening time. I was kind of dead this morning. Uh, driving home, before I even got in the car, like, both my eyes started closing. I was just too tired. I was safe. I was wide awake. Don't worry. Getting back to this. So, wow. They don't have any tips on here. Hmm. And, uh, and when you go to study German, if you do... They have tips somewhere down here. I didn't know that at first. I just kind of, one day I was just scrolling and there it was. So, I don't, it's not, not that I see, have seen unless they update it. I didn't see it on the app. So, don't know what that business is. In Lima. Larancha. Hmm. So in Italian it's Larancha. In Spanish it's Naranja. Okay. La fragola. La torta è dolce. Io bevo la limonata. Limonade? Limonata. Oh, excuse me. Lei cucina una bistecca. Bistecca. That's right. So, lei is she, lui is he. L-U-I. L-U-I. So, lemon, orange, By the way, these pictures don't necessarily always add up. Um, they'll, I know definitely on the app they'll switch up the pictures, whatever, so it won't even match the sentence. And I um, know they just do that because they want you to be more fluent. So, yeah. Something. Annoying. That was close. There they are, my okay. Lei ha una griglia. Griglia.
Oh crap. Tu bevi il tè. Io ho fame. Io. Ho. Fame. I was going to say, I have fame. <laughs> Don't know. Tu mangi il ghiaccio. Ghiaccio. Il gusto è dolce. It tastes sweet. Oh. Il gusto è dolce. Il coltello. Yeah. Il menu. Io cucino il pranzo. Io cucino la carne. Non è acido. Acido. La marmellata ha un gusto acido. Marmellata. Gusto. La pasta. Cebolla. Cebolla. Cebolla in Spanish. What the heck is that? Oh, potato. La patata. La cipolla. Cipolla. Lei beve l'olio. Olio. Oh. Io ho la ricetta. Ho. Oh. Ricetta. Io non ho pepe. Pepe? Pepe. La zuppa. I think I was thinking of another word in German or something. Il ristorante. Il riso. L'insalata è nel menu. Io cucino una salsiccia. Salsiccia.
I already forgot. I don't know. Lei ha il sale. Sale. Okay, so you might be wondering why I'm not doing accents. Well, until I feel a need to really differentiate between words, like in Spanish, L and L. Um, E-L is just like the, and then E with the four slash accent mark over, and then L, it means he. So until I feel a real necessity to differentiate between words, I don't focus on that right now. I focus on just um, really getting the word structure down. It just kind of messes me up. Um, it just it, it interferes with my flow of things, especially when learning across um, languages. Uh, because some of them have the forward facing accents, some of them have the backward facing accents. And when I say forward and backward, I mean the slash on top. Um, and then you have like, uh, let, let's see, Ch Mandarin Chinese who use those to help indicate the tone. Um, so if it's going, if it's, the slash is facing backwards, your tone is going down. If it's facing forward, you're going from bottom to up. You know, it's just up, something like that. I don't, yeah, it's something like that. And then... Um, you can have like the V on top where it goes down and then up. Um, some, there was some lady on YouTube that I was following. Oh no, I still follow her. I just don't do the Mandarin Chinese anymore. Um, I'm looking her up right now on my phone. But she's the one who helps like say we have, you know, like English has it too, but we don't use the tonal symbol thing. Oh, yo yo Chinese. She's really great. She's really great. Just if you thinking about it, she's really great when it comes to learning uh, from Chinese and whatnot. But yeah, I don't. So unless I really have to use the accents, I don't use them. Um, it's not. I focus more on like when I'm speaking and when I'm listening to it. I focus more on where the emphasis is applied on the word more than I do the uh, accents. The accents come the more comfortable I get uh, with the word itself and with the phrases and you know such like that so that's when it comes but I just don't do it. I don't I don't need it as much right now. Some people might say I'm wrong I have to learn everything right away. Um, some people say hell when you look at schools, excuse my language, but learning languages in school, I mean, they want you to learn the grammar right here and there. You can't even really take it in all the way because it's just so freaking boring when it's taught. So, yeah, anyway, so I digress. I don't use, I don't go by the accents. I will take note of them. You know, like, especially when the corrections are so, shown somewhere down here. I just take note of them. I take note of them, but I don't. Uh, excuse me. Um, the uh, uh, S. Uh, I already had it in my mind. My mind is gone. The um. Oh man, I had it, and it went right through my mind. It was there. Okay, like putting periods and question marks or exclamation marks, whatever. I don't focus on that either. I focus on the content. Do I mess up? Heck yeah. And that's because at times I just go through it so fast. But it's all the same. I focus on the content. I focus on where the emphasis is played, uh, placed on the word. On the word. Um, and when I... Let's see here. 
il pomodoro. So see at the end it's kind of like a hard R. Pomodoro. I'm not sure if I said that right, but Doro. You know, see where the emphasis is at? So that's what I focus on. How to um just how to yeah, just say stuff. I kind of already forgot that. Il pomodoro. Il cucchiaio. Okay, in Spanish is cuchillo. Il cucchiaio. What? Il, Il cucchiaio. I um, start saying this out loud just because I see the similarities a lot more. Um, but it just helps me differentiate. I will start writing in another language. I'll start reading in another language. It just, and just start um, blending in. Um, that's happened to me since I was, for as long as I can remember, they just start, they just become one in my mind. Um, yeah, I don't know. But I heard that happens a lot with like polyglot gloss. Ugh, can't talk. Um, they just say it happens naturally, so if it happens naturally with them, it happens naturally with me. La donna cucina il tacchino. Tacchino. Oh, and then while I reference it to Spanish, I also see where the, um, where any, um, French words are in here. Like how similar they are to each other. Il ragazzo pranza. Pranza. So like ragazzo, uh, ragazza, I haven't seen that in any other language when describing a boy or a girl. Um, so yeah, this is, this is blatant Italian. Il ragazzo cena. Cena. Oh. Il ragazzo ha un cucchiaio. Il ragazzo cena. Yeah, that's the same. Il vino. Oh, where does this word come from? Okay. Il ragazzo è vegetariano. La donna cucina i funghi. I funghi. For some reason I felt like I should have known that. Lui mangia la verdura. Verdura. And that too. It just popped in my mind. Why didn't I say this out loud? I have issues. Lui è un cameriere. Cameriere. Oh, like camero. Camero. In Spanish, okay. Cam cameriere. 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 
Il cuoco cucina i funghi. Cuoco. Il cuoco cucina i funghi. So not bad. Okay, so if this is your first time watching any of my language videos, or in, especially if you're new to Duolingo. So first of all, the site itself as well as the app are different. Not sure why I'll just shook that, but I'll just try to put emphasis on this, as if you didn't already know. Um, <laughs> the app offers a chat like area where you can chat with box after like your. A few. Oh, I'm so sorry. After like a few lessons in, it opens up a chat dialogue area. Then you can complete more and more. You know, after you do the first one, second one, and it just opens up more. Well, I found out today when studying Spanish that, I mean, I already knew that, you know, the site doesn't have uh, a chat room, or not a chat room, uh, a, a, t a place to chat with, you know, robots. But what I found out while studying Spanish um, two videos ago, today, I learned that there is a story time area, like... It helps you reinforce what you learned and, you know, it's still, you can still hover over and still figure out what the heck is going on. Um, hover over the word and whatnot. It's really great. It's something I was looking for. I, because I need a book that's, I mean, I've been really wanting a book for the past week or two that it's, I can read it. It's not childish like, because I have bilingual books, but they're really geared towards children, and I was just looking for the simplicity of it. So I was looking for something that help, that I can read that's geared towards adults. I'm not saying kids can't read it or anything. It's just something that I'm not appealing, something that's not appealing to a child's um, humor or, or just world. Uh, I guess you could say. Granted, what was it? One of the books I downloaded was the Harry Potter Sorcerer's Stone, but I know I have one in German and the other one, I believe, is in Spanish. I love Harry Potter. Call me a kid, big kid, whatever. I don't care. Now, that is, I love that every day. I reread the books and on the third book right now, we're reading it. But, I mean, just, and I got it off of Amazon, um, but just reading it, I didn't understand a doggone word. So today, this just um, this just helped me out a lot uh, when learning about the book. So now I didn't say it for German. I'm 40, 40, 47 percent fluent in German, according to Duolingo. I don't have the book on there. I'm almost sixty for Spanish. I think I'm fifty six, maybe seven or more. I don't know. Somewhere around there, in the high fifties. Um, it has it for that, for that, and in Spanish, in Spanish, I'm considered a advanced. Up to, I'm considered to have advanced fluency. German, I'm considered to have intermediate fluency. Obviously, this, I'm just a beginner. So I don't know if I have to be in advanced fluency for this, you know, or real, just really close to sixty because I think this, I'm pretty sure this is the first time I ever saw that book pop up. If it or that the page at the end of like my lesson is showing me the book area. It could have been there before. I doubt it, but it could have been, and I just did not see it. Um, I'll look on here. I'm going to end the lesson here for tonight because I know this has been a long video. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Oh! I think I have been on this page before. <coughs> That's what it is. Duolingo Stories uses dialogue to help intermediate... And advanced learners improve their reading, listening, comprehension skills. Okay, cool. I'm not intermediate. I'm not going to even try. I don't want to try right now. Actually, I do want to try. But it probably won't even let me in there. Uh, 
Okay. Okay, now see, I'm intermediate in Portuguese, French, and German, and then advanced here. Okay. Yeah, see, it won't work for me right here. So it is here for German. Now I know. Wow. I'll just have to com complete a series, just do Duolingo story time. Hmm. I love that idea. Okay, cool. Well, this makes me want to keep going even more. Wait, did it say it was good on Portuguese, too? What? No way. Spanish, wow, Spanish, Portuguese, French, and German. Holy crap. Well, whatever. So, anyways, I'm going to end it here for today. For, for today. Let me get my life together. I'm glad the video just started working again. Um... Yeah, this is my friend here. He is a beast. Oh, and this is since what Sunday, I think. He's a beast. He's 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 a beast. He's been he's a beast. So, anyways.